So in order to go from initial conditions that all that stuff, all that information coming from various sources through a computer model to ultimately then ending up on something you see on the internet or in the newspaper or here on the radio, like a forecast, weather forecast, it has uh, some work to, 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 to go. In fact, this kind of suggests that, um, that the meteorologists tend to almost at times have a gut instinct sort of as they wade through these various possibilities, applying different models. Um, they, you know, it's, it's almost like an art form. <laughs> Um, so if you're going to want to go into, uh, meteorology, there are all sorts of different aspects to it, um, including dissemination of it. Of course, that would be your, your weather forecaster on a TV show. But here's a happy person at the National Weather Service. Doesn't she look happy? Um, so in general, and now some of these do involve computers, but we can kind of look at different um, approaches to forecasting the weather. For instance, there's climatology forecasts, and that is kind of like the most vague sort of, I feel like, sort of uh, forecast. It's real general. So for instance, a climatology forecast, like this slide says, for this area in December would be that um, we can expect snow. Okay, so basically you take a general region, southeast Iowa, uh, time of the year, December, and then climate the climate for this region this time of year is snow and cold temperatures. Uh, persistence forecasting works for some regions of the world, as I understand it, better than others. For persistence forecasting says that the weather you're having now will persist or maintain what it is. And so like tomorrow when you get up, it's like Groundhog Day. <laughs> you'll relive and ha you'll have very similar weather. Um, persistence forecasting. not. To both of those, actually, I take that back. I don't think you need a computer necessarily to do climatology forecasts or persistence forecasting. We we'll probably do that all the time. Um, the analog approach, I do think you'd need a computer. <laughs> so basically, what it does is it is a little time machine, and it looks back at, uh, it finds an analogous, if you know what analogous means, it means like an equal, like something that's very similar. It finds an analogous day in history and then for this region. And then um, what the weather was like the next day from the analogous day is what it's going to be like now. So yes, I think you need a database to search the, the analog approach to forecasting weather. Trend forecasting um, is kind of what some of us do sometimes when we look at a weather map. If we look kind of to what's happening to our west, and we kind of know that we are in the mid-latitude westerly winds, we'll kind of steer, um, steer weather systems our way. So trend forecasting says that something's happening upstream, and the trend is that it's going to hit us. So not bad, trend, fast, trend forecasting. Now casting is uh, similar to trend forecasting, but it, it's not out days um, it's out only a matter of hours.